you can determine exactly what your company should be paying you. And you can do it with free resources. My career has been dedicated to building compensation structures, writing job descriptions, and assigning compensation to associates. And over the years, I've been flooded with conversations and questions from frustrated employees feeling underpaid and desperate for a raise. And as a fellow employee, I always feel for those in this situation. However, compensation is rarely assigned based on subjectivity or emotions which means a request for a raise has to actually make sense, or the vast majority of the time, the request will be denied. Senior level leaders won't sign off on unjustified raises. Unfortunately, so often these discussions reveal a few things about the employee. One, they're already paid appropriately. Two, they have a very unrealistic amount in mind. Or three, they have no idea why they should actually get a raise in the first place. Compensation teams have mountains of data that is used to help build the structure and then assign the compensation to the various jobs that they have. They have surveys encompassing thousands of companies across the world in different industries broken down by experience, location, company size, and even profits and earnings. However, this data is incredibly expensive and widely unavailable to the everyday person. So what do most employees do? They go to Glassdoor, they search their job title, and then they pick a number within that range that seems reasonable. So I wanted to do this myself and see how it stacks up to real compensation survey data. I looked up a compensation analyst with zero to three years of experience, and I looked that up for my local hometown where I grew up which is in a small rural area in a small state. So what did Glassdoor come back with? It produced a pay range of $67,000 to $135,000 with the best guess of $96,000 a year. This data was based on 1,395 compensation analysts in my hometown. There are a couple of red flags here. One, there's zero chance my hometown has 1,395 compensation analysts. There are less than 100 companies even big enough to have a dedicated compensation analyst. And lastly, based on actual data for my area, and this job in particular with a range of zero to three years of experience, the range should be between $45,000 to $70,000 a year. So you can see the huge difference in what Glassdoor produced and what actual compensation data says. And it will be that actual compensation data that companies use to assign compensation. So any rate I choose from Glassdoor would be unreasonable. So I wanted to see if non-compensation people can really determine what their pay should be based on freely accessible information. And actually, I think you can. So here's the method that I used using nothing but free resources. Now I did this for a compensation analyst because I've been in that job throughout my career. I'm very familiar with it and I'm very familiar with that job back in my hometown. But you can use your own title and your location as the starting point for this process. So step number one is to open up LinkedIn and search for the job that you want to look for. We're looking for any postings that have pay ranges associated with them. Because of the new push for pay transparency, there are a lot of jobs out there on LinkedIn that will now have a pay range associated with that job. That pay range isn't the full pay range, it's likely only a portion of their pay range, but it gives us a good starting point. And pay close attention to the years of experience required and weigh that back against your years of experience in that role. So doing this, I found five compensation analyst jobs with pay ranges associated. Job number one was in New York with three to five years minimum of experience required and $64,000 to $97,000 pay range. Job number two was also in New York with three years minimum required experience and a range of $86,000 to $108,000 a year. Job number three was in Denver, Colorado, 
with five years minimum experience required and a pay range of ninety to $120,000 a year. Job number four was in St. Louis, Missouri with one to two years minimum experience required and a pay range of fifty-five dollars to $65,000 a year. And then job number five was in Dallas, Texas with a two years minimum experience required and a pay range of $52,000 to $72,000 per year. Now you can already see from those locations just how important location is when it comes to your potential pay. Step number two, go to Forbes cost of living comparison tool or any cost of living comparison tool. Here, we're going to enter the five locations and the range minimums and compare that back to our location. In my case, my hometown. So these are the results from my small hometown. In job number one, the equivalent earnings should be $39,000 a year. For job number two, the equivalent would be $67,000 a year. For job number three, the equivalent would be $68,000 a year. For job number four, $53,000 a year. And for job number five, $42,000 a year. So you can see, because my hometown is such a small town, compared to New York, Denver, St. Louis, and Dallas, I should be making significantly less than most of these jobs have their ranges posted for. We then need to average these out to get what we're going to use as our range minimum. The average of these rates is $47,000 a year. So we are going to use 47,000 as the absolute bare minimum that we would ask for if we were asking for a raise or negotiating a salary. Step number three, we want to use range spread to give ourselves a range. Companies have a range. Your employer is gonna have a pay range. So we need to have a range to get an idea of what is that range from 47 hour minimum up to what are we going to expect our salary to be. While this isn't a certainty, the typical range spread that companies use is around 40%. So let's apply that spread to our range minimum. So if we do that, it gives us a range of 47,000 all the way up to $66,000 per year. Now, if we think back to what the real compensation survey data said, it was 45,000 to 70,000 a year. So using completely free resources and some research, we were able to get pretty close to the actual compensation data just by using range spread, Forbes cost of living comparison tool, and LinkedIn job postings. Now, at this point, we have an idea of where our pay should be, but we're still not there yet. How do we hone in on where within that range we should be asking for a raise? And this is where it gets tough. Every company is different, and they all have different comp structures and philosophy of compensation. A market range isn't necessarily the range your company will use. Some may want to be below market, they may have a range that starts out at thirty-five dollars or $40,000 a year. Maybe they don't have competition. Maybe they have a very low budget. And so, yes, they'll want to be close to market, but they may lag behind the market. Other companies will want to be above the market. Maybe there's a lot of competition. Maybe they want high quality employees. And so their range may start at fifty, fifty-five thousand dollars $55,000 a year because they want to attract the best candidates and then retain them. So you'll want to take in any company data that you can possibly find. And that data can be in the form of what is your current pay? What was your starting pay? And how much experience did you have at that time? Do you know what any other people are making? And what kind of transparency has your company had with their compensation? Your company data doesn't have to be the specific details on how they handle compensation but simply what information can you gather about your company's compensation that is available to you. Think of any data that you have that could impact your compensation and just make note of those things because all of that will help give you an idea of where in our range you should ask for an amount. So let's play out a quick scenario. 
If someone back in my hometown was hired two years ago with only one year of experience, they were hired at $44,000 a year, and now they're making $46,000 a year. We have a good idea that the range we're looking at is forty-seven dollars to $66,000 a year, and that is based on zero to three years of experience. Our range isn't 100% true. We just gained the best guess from our free resources. So we need to be reasonable about our request. If we're making $46,000 a year now, a request to go to forty-seven dollars is silly because just one merit cycle will likely get you to that point already. But $66,000 a year is also silly because it's very unlikely that we're there in terms of our experience. So what do we do? I'm going to give you some insider advice here. Companies look at percentages very closely. Most companies are going to be very familiar with 3% because most merits are around 3%. Cost of living increases are also generally around 3%. And so most companies aren't going to bat an eye at 3% because that's a fairly standard raise. Most companies will actually have their interest peaked at 10% because it seems like a big deal. A 10% raise is a pretty significant bump. If you're making $100,000 a year, that's $10,000. That's a lot of money for a budget to swallow. So, when we are asking for a raise, we need to be above what's common, but below what's going to scare them off. And so my typical advice would be to ask for between 5 to 8%. This is both reasonable, but not so high that people are going to start to panic. And in this case, the request would be between $48,500 and $49,500. These amounts are close to the bottom of our range, but are also reasonable. The odds of your company agreeing to this is much more likely than pulling in a high number from Glassdoor. So this is a good strategy to take. Not to mention my 5 to 8%. That's just based on my experience of what companies typically find reasonable what most leaders are comfortable with giving. But if you feel like you can go 10, 15%, then go ahead and ask for that number. But be prepared to fall back to that five to 8% range if you get rejected immediately. Now this isn't a guaranteed success plan, but it is better than going into a raise request with no information. Understand that Glassdoor is a useful tool. You can gain a lot of information from there, but as you could see, just from a simple example, the range was way off, and so off in fact, that almost any request I would have made based on Glassdoor would have been at the very top of what market data says I should make. If you found this information helpful, please like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you're notified of any of our upcoming videos.